I'm going down to the library, picking out a book, check it in, check it out. Gonna say hi to the dictionary, picking out a book, check it in, check it out. Look at all these new Christmas books that we've got coming out. I know some of our patrons are going to be very excited to see the Christmas Cupcake Murder. Isn't there a De Debbie McComber one there too? There is. There's a, new, there's a new one out. Um, Jingle All the Way. A new Christmas novel. Ooh, that's cool. Oh, Lancaster Family. That's cool. Wait, till, wait till you see this one. This one people are just going to die. The Hallmark Channel Countdown to Christmas. <laughs> noise. noise there is so much in here there's like recipes behind the scenes how to decorate is there crafts and stuff in yep. there too yep there is wow. stuff like this nice. so excited about that that's very cool we got a bunch of new kid books too didn't we what are you working on we did well i've got more christmas ones sherlock bones I read about Sherlock, Sherlock Bones. Bones. That's that. always exciting. Oh, yes. What? Fanny Flag. <laughs> this is the sequel to Fried Green Tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe. <gasps> Weren't you just talking about that? I movie? love this book. Love the movie. You, oh. better, you better get it on hold. There it is. Buddy Thread Good. Put it on hold. Oh, for oh. oh he's going back to Whistle Stop with his mother, Ruth. See, I never there. read that book. You didn't? I did not. You got to read that book. I know, I've heard it. And then there's the things. movie, of course. The movie is yes. just awesome. Yes. I can't believe you haven't seen that. I know. So excited. Yes, I'll put that one on hold. Now, Amy was telling me about this one. I've heard about that one. I the think Alice I have that on my list. Yes. I haven't read that one. Yeah. It's um, 1947, World War II, American College Girl. Charlie St. Clair, pregnant, unmarried, and on the verge of being thrown out of her very proper family. Ooh. Isn't it World War, like, World War I, right? No, World War II, 1947. Yeah, but it doesn't go back in time. Oh, 1915, yes. Yeah. Great, great, great War. So it kind of covers kind of both of them. It does. Oh. You know, this is the problem with being here. I know. <laughs> Can you imagine if it was a shoe store? Oh, I'd be proud. <laughs> I was so bad, actually. <laughs> I need so much. So much. Oh, am I behind? You are. Got to put the dates on. Ooh, there you is go. that a witchy one? That's a... A tale of witchcraft. Christmas oh, here. Don't Kids forget book. the Christmas cupcake murders. And look at this. These are not going to stay here long. Oh, no. A new Stuart Woods. Yeah, those are going to go real fast. Lee Child, New Jack Reacher, and then James Patterson, Three Women Disappear. And then Tracy Peterson, she's very popular around here. Yes. Forever By Your Side. I wonder if this is part of a series. Do you want to get the phone? I will get the phone. And end. <laughs> Hi, I'm here this week with Amy Zimmerman. Hi, Amy. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, thank you for asking me. Yeah, of course. So I'm really excited to jump into this this week because I really know you as one of our um, library patrons that takes out stacks and stacks and stacks <laughs> of books. And it's always fun. You know, I, I never feel when I'm behind the desk, I can ask you all these personal questions. So I am excited. Um, uh, we've already covered your name. Tell me what you do in the community here. So I am a teacher at Naholstein Elementary School. I teach fourth grade. Fourth grade. Okay. It's, I don't even know how school works these days. Do you have a specific topic then? Or is that like you do every topic? 
I teach everything. And then this year I'm also, I'm teaching in person and I'm also teaching virtual students at the same time. You are, do you have um, uh, like an equal load of those or is it more in person, more? Uh, I'm almost split in half. So I have nine students that are virtual and 14 that are in person. So actually a, a third to two thirds, I guess you would say. So when they're virtual, does that mean you're like, you get to see into all these kids' lives and homes? Is that, I mean, do they do the video and stuff? Yes, we do do video. So, yep, I have seen a lot of kitties and dogs and show yeah. and tell for uh, class. Oh, time. how fun. That's fun. At least there's not, that's not a weird list. That's pretty, I mean, I've seen in adults meetings, kitties and pets yeah. and so. <laughs> pretty normal these days. I, I love that little personal insight we're getting by having to meet that way. Oh no. One moment, our uh, <laughs> lights like to go off. Oh, that's funny. Here we go. I started the fan, so that should keep things working for a while. <laughs> I was wondering if maybe you'd have to just wave every 10 minutes. No, or I something. actually have to go out into the classroom and, and wave, and then it goes on. So I get my exercise during the day. Okay, well, we'll try to keep it semi short. How long is the timer? <laughs> oh, the fan is going now, so that'll keep it. That'll oh, keep good. It okay. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Um, Okay, so how how did you end up here in New Holstein then? Um, I actually grew up in the Holy Land area, so I went to high school here in the Holstein, and then when it came time uh, for student teaching, I did student teaching here from Marion College for sixth grade, and then I was hired the following year. Wow, that's incredible. So you went, where's Marion? Marion University's in Fond du Lac. Oh, yep. Okay. That's right. That's right. Okay. So where in the Holy Land are you from? Uh, I grew up on a farm outside of uh, Mount Calvary near St. Peter. Oh, okay. I, so beautiful. I have a little classic car that I've been driving through the hills and it's like the most serene part of Wisconsin, I swear. Mm -hmm. um, but okay, so born and raised, then you have to have favorites in New Holstein. I, well, the libraries are top. We love going oh, there for the crafts you. and getting the books. <laughs> um, Good. Our yeah. family enjoys going to Honeymoon Acres and getting all our flowers and plants there. Um, I taught the McShaw family, so that's always oh. special for me. And then we love Village and Pizza. So mm -hmm. that's where we go for takeout. We have the Zimmerman special uh, for everyone's birthdays and things like that. So you've made your own pizza there? Well, no, it's just plain, but we just call it the Zimmerman special because we always order the exact same thing every time <laughs> we get food there. Isn't, I find that so comforting. You have your you know your place and your thing i i always got the same pancakes every single time i went to the cafe up in my hometown i i would cry if they weren't still serving them it's like the <laughs> only thing i get on the menu i like that you call it the zimmerman special that's amazing um so you're you're teaching um what i it's hard i guess i'd say what would you like to tell us about what's going on in school what message would you have for the community um, about anything upcoming um, that go, you know, with your school or classroom? Um, I think what I'd like, what I'm very proud of is because I'm on the reentry committee for the district mm -hmm. now with this pandemic, and we have worked really hard to make sure we have safety measures in place to keep people here as long as possible. So I'm yeah. really proud that we've been able to stay open as long as we have and still keep teaching even when kids are in quarantine so mm -hmm. that they can't miss a beat. 
Um, I'm also very proud and I've had parents tell me they're really happy with we're making the kids feel normal in an unnormal situation. So that's what I want people to realize that we're making the best of things in an unprecedented time right now. I have goosebumps. That's incredible. Wow, there's a lot of feedback. Sorry. Um, it, it's so funny. My daughter is, uh, she goes to daycare and she's on her third quarantine since September 18th, something like that. So third quarantine in a couple of months. And yesterday she said to me when I expre expressed she didn't get to go to daycare, she was like, is this going to happen to me forever? And it was so tragic trying to explain that to a three-year-old. I do think kids are resilient, but it is incredible because I think I was myself skeptical. Is the daycare going to stay open? Is How can school mm -hmm. stay open? Like you just keep bringing these people into groups. And so it, it's, it must be amazing what you guys are doing over there that we've stayed open, that kids are still able to get their education. For me, that's astounding. I can't imagine how much it normalizes a child's day to still be able to attend class, to still have those ways of, that access to you guys. So if somebody is in quarantine, can they then just jump on to virtual if they have all the tools at home? They do. We actually will send uh, iPads home with the students. So I've had students who've had to go in quarantine. They've logged in within five minutes of being home. And I think part oh, of that is because my class is so used to me being the virtual teaching at the same time with the in-person. They just know you log on and the school day goes on just normally. That's incredible. Yeah, I think they everybody needs some or would like some structure, you know? Right. And so for the kids to get that, that's so awesome. So thank you for doing that. That's so incredible. I'm having a blast. I am enjoying oh, teaching virtually and my class does such a good job. There are times and I've told them, I don't have all the answers and we just work as a team to figure it out together. And this has been a fantastic year of just problem solving as a, I like to think of us as a family and a team and we just yeah. work together. I would say those are some of those positives that I have seen come out as well is this um, innovation uh, and then maybe propelling everyone into like an equal leadership role because I think we're all, you know, armed with the same information or lack thereof. And so we are right. all working together to make decisions so that you have to turn to your peers and the people around you to say like, are you comfortable with this? Does this work for you? There's just so much more collaboration in unique ways, I think, you know, and that's been outstanding. So that's I, good. I'm, I'm so glad it's going well. I'm a part of a few Facebook groups and the collaboration that's going on, it's worldwide. So I'm getting ideas from Scotland and France and we've been implementing them and sharing out and it's just been fabulous learning experience. That is so awesome. That is awesome. Okay, cool. I didn't know if we'd get such a fun answer on that question. <laughs> um, um, so, okay, uh, now I have a couple of really personal questions and I, I'm obsessed with food, hence our food um, uh, program that we have here at the library during normal times. And so I always wonder, First of all, if you could sit down with anyone for a meal, uh, past or present, who would it be and what would be served? Oh my goodness gracious. That one's a tough one. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm actually going to pick someone that um, I just read about. And actually I have the book because I like the oh. book. Oops, this way. Thank you, Sarah. And I would love to talk with her, I think, because she is the one who saved Thanksgiving. And she okay. is the one that made Thanksgiving a national holiday by a letter campaign. And she went okay. through decades trying to get Thanksgiving to be a national holiday. So I think that'd be fabulous. 
And then what would your meal be? Ooh. Well, since she made Thanksgiving, it would probably have to be a traditional Thanksgiving meal, I would say, especially if I didn't have to cook it. <laughs> yeah. <That would be> <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> is so I don't know anything about this story. Uh is was traditional Thanksgiving meal, I mean, in the sense of how we think of it today, we have our own traditions. Is it the same? Is what we serve accurate? Um, from the research I've done from the first Thanksgiving, I believe they had goose and eel. <laughs> okay. Yes. So not so yeah. Not quite so what our people... traditional is, yes. Okay, so so do you want the eel Thanksgiving or the turkey Thanksgiving? Uh, I think I would go with the turkey. Yes. I think me too, me too. Good choice. Um, I, this is going to be a way more challenging question for you. I know it. What could you name a favorite book? Do you have a favorite book? Well, based on your show from last week, I believe Tara called them comfy books. Was I correct? A comfy mm -hmm. series. I'm big on comfy series. So when I find an author, I will, as you said, I grab the whole stack of the entire author. <laughs> but J.D. Robb, I would say, is my ultimate favorite author for a series. Cool, cool. Yeah, see, I have favorite authors. I'm like that, too. It's just too hard. There's no favorite book in there, I'm sure, right? Nope, you just, just go in order, and then I'll start over, and I just start reading them all in order, and I just read them over and over and over again. You reread. Definitely. I've read Harry Potter. <laughs> I've lost track of how many times I've read Harry Potter. And I find something I new can't... every single time I read it. I, I get that. I I do enjoy rereading, but seeing the stacks that you check out, I can't even believe you have time to reread. <laughs> well, during the summer, it's a readathon. During the school year, not as much time for reading. Oh. Sure, sure. That makes sense. Yes. Well, you know, I think that was all of my questions. And so um, unless you had anything that you wanted to share with us, I would say thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you for having me. This was marvelous. I was nervous to do it. I told my class as soon as I got your email that because I, I was uh -huh. so excited and they're like, I'm like, I don't want to do it. And they're because I'm too nervous. And the kids are like, don't do it. You just don't do it. And I said, no, this is the year of trying new things. And you just <laughs> need to step up and you'll make it through. And that's what we're always talking about in class. Even if it makes you uncomfortable, that's a chance for you to grow. So you just give it your best shot. I love that you even used it as a teaching opportunity. <laughs> There's always a teaching opportunity in everything. So I agree. I agree. It's just wonderful that I'm so excited. I hope that they all watch it too. You, you and everybody else, everyone is nervous for it. I, w I was nervous when we first started this. And then I really realized it's just such a fun opportunity to get to know people. So I thank exactly. you so much for showing up and overcoming your nerves. Thank you so much. Yes, you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. We'll see you soon. You too. Bye now. Thanks. Bye-bye. I'm going down to the library, picking out a book, check it in, check it out. Gonna say hi to the dictionary, picking out a book, check it in, check it out. I'm going down to the library. Shh.